Hello everyone and welcome to the Prophecy File Briefing. I'm glad that you've joined me today. I want to share with you just a little clip from my very special guest who was with us for the Prophecy Files Bible Prophecy Conference, Pastor Shane Warren. Even while he was speaking, the subject that he was taking up was unfolding right in the service. And I want you to make sure that you hear what he has to say. So here's a short clip of Pastor Shane Warren from the Prophecy Files Bible Prophecy Conference. One of my favorite groups of people in history are the Moravian Christians. They were persecuted Protestants before there even was Protestants. They were a minority in Central Europe. No such thing as Protestantism, but they were Protestants nonetheless. 100 years before Martin Luther the Moravians rejected, now this is before Martin Luther, the Moravians rejected many of the abuses and the errors of Rome and pursued a simple faith of worship and charity for their generation. As a result, the Moravians were severely persecuted and they, were, they suffered great hardship. Nevertheless, they are marked by history for their extraordinary compassion, their service, and above all, their passion for souls. In the early 1700s, Moravians began coming into the New World. Some came because they were trying to escape the persecution and because they were being forced from their homes. Others were compelled by a powerful missionary impulse. For example, some saw a swelling population of slaves being transported to the colonies in the Americas and they wondered how these poor black souls would be reached for Christ. They noticed that the treatments of the slaves everywhere in the New World was appalling. But in the West Indies in particular, it was especially so. The seemingly endless supply of fresh slaves available from Africa convinced Caribbean plantation owners that they didn't need to provide any care for their slaves at all. So they literally worked their slaves to death and then they would just go out and order or buy replacements. It was this group of shackled and shamed humanity that broke the heart of white Moravian Christians and they had this desire to reach them. The problem is, watch now, how does one culture infiltrate another culture. They started praying, burdened about the fact that these black African slaves were gonna die and go to hell because they didn't know anything more than pantheism at the very least, serving idol gods and they didn't know Jesus Christ. They began to pray, God, how can we take the gospel to them? Their solution was this. They would sell themselves into slavery because the only way to reach these slaves was to become one of them. On October the 8th, 1732, a Dutch ship left Copenhagen Harbor bound for the Danish West Indies and on board there were two white Moravian missionaries. John Leonard Doper, who was a potter, and David Nitschman, who was a carpenter. Both were on their way for one reason, to sell themselves into slavery so that they could reach the slaves of the West Indies. As the ship slipped away from the belly of the ship with the slaves, they looked to their friends and their loved ones who were on the dock. They stretched out their hands out of the windows of the ship and they cried a cry that would ring in the ears of future generation and Moravian missionaries. They knew that they would never, ever see their family again. They would never hug their kids. 
They would never embrace their grandkids, but they were so burdened that there was a culture that was lost and without God, they were willing to give it all up to take Jesus into that culture. So as the slaves ship slipped out of the harbor, they had been bought on the auction block, put in the shame shackles. They stood at the window and they released a cry that is forever recorded in history. And here it is. May the lamb that was slain receive the reward of his suffering. Amen. They sold them so. Let me quote the scripture again. A seed shall serve him and it shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. What, do they, what did these two white men going into a black culture, a slave culture, accomplish? Well, some historians estimate that 80,000 slaves came to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ through the effort of these two men who decided to give up their life. What were they? They were the seeds willing to die, fall into the ground, and their king would receive the harvest of a generation. They understood what you and I have got to get in our spirit once again in the body of Christ. We are placed on this earth for a fleeting wisp of time, not to be comfortable, but to comfort. Not to be served, but to serve. Not to bring glory to ourselves, but to give God the glory that he deserves. May the lamb that was slain receive the reward of his suffering. You've been hearing an excerpt from Pastor Shane Warren, who was one of my special guests right here at the Prophecy Files Conference. And I know that it will be a blessing to you as you watch the entirety of his message. Even while he was teaching on a subject, that particular subject was unfolding right in the service in the news. And I want to encourage you to hear the entirety of his message. I believe it will be insightful and help you to understand just how close we are to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to make sure you're with me for more of these Prophecy File briefings as we bring you excerpts from our special guest from the recent Prophecy Files Bible Prophecy Conference. Till then, remember Jesus Christ is coming soon.